Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Slipping Out. In this one, we'll be taking a look at behind the scenes gaming secrets and also out of bound secrets on the new Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 game. And not only that, but I'm absolutely thrilled to say that one of my favourite creators is here to join us for this episode. It is, of course, the awesome odd header and we've been working together to bring you this one and he'll be showing you some amazing and crazy secrets that we managed to find together throughout the video. That along with more of my usual behind the scenes footage, this has to be one of my favourite episodes of Slipping Out so far and myself and Odd hope you enjoy it too. So first of all I wanted to show you the menu select screen but in particular the level select screen. Now, I don't recall seeing a level select screen quite like this in any other game that I've looked at in all the time I've been doing this sort of stuff, and I'll explain why. It looks like we're in the middle of whichever level you're wanting to select, however, all is not what it seems. If I take the menu UI away and we look from outside, this may blow your mind, it certainly did mine, but these are just cube-like flat textures. Nothing inside the cube, such as the objects, the rails, even the ramps, nothing inside here is 3D. This is practically how a skybox works. It's certainly a neat optical illusion that I would never have guessed it was like this without seeing it for myself. And just in case you're wondering where this menu is based, it's just across from the main menu select screen where we can edit our character and such. Alright, so I think it's about time to move on to some of the secrets and odd mysteries that can be found in the game. And to do this, I'm going to let our special guest of the episode take over. If by chance you haven't seen his channel, check out the description. You will not be disappointed. Huge welcome to the show, Odd Header. Hey Slippy, thanks again for bringing me on. This is a really exciting episode, and not just because I'm a huge Tony Hawk fan but because me and Slippy found so many out of bounds discoveries and Easter eggs in the new Tony Hawk 1 and 2. It's a really great tribute to the original games that the new Tony Hawk has so much detail to be found that it can't even normally be seen in the actual game, which almost feels like a lot of this stuff was hidden just because they thought hackers like us were gonna be going through all the levels. So sit back and enjoy as we show you many new Easter eggs and discoveries from Tony Hawk 1 and 2. This odd discovery comes from Harry Chuix, who sent this to me through oddheader.com, who found this before the game even came out by hacking the warehouse demo. But sure enough, when the full game came out, Slippy found that this doll is hidden all throughout the game. Now, maybe somebody out there has a better idea of who exactly this is supposed to be, but it does strongly remind me of the SNL character Mr. Bill, albeit with a lot of the colors changed up. A number of them were hidden in places that could normally never be seen without hacking the camera. And some are just near impossible to see, such as this one in San Francisco with the dust in front of it there's just no way you would normally be able to see this in the game. So you might have noticed for yourself that all throughout the game there's gnomes hidden everywhere. But some of these gnomes are hidden in spots that are just completely impossible to see without mods. I was particularly impressed by this gnome hidden all the way on the other side of this lake out of bounds in New York. As a kid, I always wondered what was on the other side of this lake, so it was really cool for them to hide a gnome out here where there was no possible way any player could have seen this without hacking the game. I also asked Slippy if he could get a closer look at the gnome in this window in school too, as I couldn't really get a close look at what the object next to him was. But now I can see this is a gnome that teddy bears don't want to mess with. Also throughout the game are a bunch of tags that say, oh, you found me. While nearly all of them can be found inside the level, some of them are especially hard to find. Also, Slippy wanted me to point out that he didn't manage to find one of these on every single level, so it's possible that there's still some of these meant to be found that we haven't. If you know of any more that we missed, let us know in the comments down below or even come join my Discord. Link in description down below. Alright, cool stuff. Definitely stick around because Odd Header will be back later in the episode with some crazy out of bounds mysteries that we found that cannot be seen from the normal player view. 
There is also a cheeky mystery that I've snuck into the episode without Odd Header knowing, which I think you're going to enjoy. I'm sorry, Odd, but I'm sure you'll appreciate it when you see it. Until then, we're going to be taking a look at some behind the scenes footage of the levels and what's out of bounds. Just a moment ago we saw the warehouse which, to be honest, other than a few empty buildings which load up depending on where you are in the level, there's not much to see outside. In stark contrast to that, check out all the buildings outside the school. I had no idea there was so much outside this level. In fact, there is so much that some of the buildings don't even load when inside the map as they are so far away and out of the culling distance. One of the things that I've always wondered about the mall and certain other levels is what's outside where the player gets teleported back to the start of the level. It's something I had to show as I know my regular viewers would ask if I didn't show it so here it is. Maybe there's not too much to see but looking at the abandoned mall from the outside was pretty interesting and seems rather spooky. Now I've got to be honest, I had a feeling Chicago was going to be pretty plain to see, much like Warehouse as it's solely set indoors. That was until I went outside and I was totally blown away. This has to be one of the most interesting skyboxes I have ever seen. I'm not sure where this is based in the world, maybe one of you viewers out there know this. If you do then let us know in the comments, but check this graffiti out guys, we can even read most of it, it's that clear. I mean, maybe someone out there watching has even done some of this. We also get a glimpse of the photographer's camera equipment. Pretty cool stuff. Here's another quick out of bounds shot on downtown. Now, when myself and Odd were discussing what should be included in the video, he asked me to take a look at some of the building windows on this level. During a lot of the levels, there is a fully 3D modelled room behind these. However, on some levels, like downtown, it's yet another trick on the eye, as this is just a texture with what I believe is called a parallax, which makes it look as though it has something inside. In this instance, it just happens to be a slippy sign, which is cool. One of my favourite levels to see out of bounds on was San Francisco. I never noticed whilst playing normally, but a model of Alcatraz Island can be found out here in the bay. Although when getting up close, there's not too much detail to be found, but it is a nice touch that it's here anyway. Also, whilst we're on this level, just check out the size of this out of bounds area. It goes so far that you can barely see the level itself. Okay, so I'm sure you all know by now that you can collect alien plushies scattered across the maps to unlock the alien character. Well, if you didn't know that, you do now. However, what you may not know is that much like the other characters in the game, the alien has, yep, human teeth, which looks kind of freaky but not as freaky as finding out that it actually has three sets of teeth. Well, I guess it is alien after all. Marseille, France is one of the levels that has a hidden area. I hope I got the name right, by the way. Sorry to any French viewers if I got that wrong. Anyway, you can unlock it by knocking over this post, but where exactly is this hidden area compared to the rest of the level? Well, at first I was kind of shocked because I couldn't see it underneath the map. However, when I zoomed way out, it is down here to be found. There was a lot to look at on Venice Beach, which has a great resemblance to the real location. But one of the main things myself and Odd Hedder wanted to see were how the people on the beach were done. It turns out they are actually 2D sprites, and many of them. The foreground in the background on the pier is also 2D, whilst the pier itself is a 3D model. I 
realise we've already taken a quick look at skyboxes, but I just had to show you this one on the bullring. It's clearly being taken on a car park somewhere out in the middle of nowhere land, and I'm guessing that could be the photographer's vehicle, as there's no one else out here. What I do love about this is that whilst playing the game normally, you'd have no idea what it looks like out here. However, now you do. Also, if you wanted to know where does the chopper go when it crashes, well, here it is. Alright, we're coming towards the end of the episode now. Odd Header is coming back very soon to finish off the show. But first of all, I just wanted to show you how Mount Skatemore is made by using 2D textures all put together. Very simple effect, but looks pretty cool from within the main map. Also, this point on Skate to Heaven, when it looks as though we're in a different place, is again practically the same trick that was used on the shop windows that we saw earlier. So there is nothing outside, even when we go out there with the camera. You may not have realised this, but you can see the secret section of Skate to Heaven from the main part of the level. Well, actually, it's one of the half pipes that you're seeing. Now, I'm going to hand back over to Odd for some more Easter eggs and out of bounds secrets. Another interesting detail is for some reason all of the vehicles in the game are piloted by crash test dummies. The funniest one though has to be this windsurfing crash test dummy being followed by sharks. Which is just so far out in the distance there's no way you would have saw this in the actual game. So here's some fun details in the mall that many were likely to have missed. This wall in the store in the mall holds a small reference to Venice Beach. And next to it, the portrait on the wall is a reference to the last level of the game Skater Heaven. This is definitely one of my favorites that Slippy discovered, as there's plenty of mannequins that can be seen throughout the mall decorating the background. This particular mannequin is hidden behind a shadowy part of the boarded up window that makes it especially hard to see in the actual game. And when Slippy got a close up look at the base of the mannequin, he noticed that it's actually standing on a skateboard. And as a really cool easter egg, this especially hidden mannequin happens to be the only one that's actually skateboarding the whole level. What a cool detail to add to the most hidden mannequin in the game. While this can be seen in the normal game, there's strangely a message on this news ticker that says, New anal disorder linked to effects caused by philantrical. Slippy pointed that one out to me and we have no idea what that means. Since the level resets you when you hit the far end of this boat, it's near impossible to see there's a hidden tic-tac-toe behind the finish line. Lastly, one of the coolest finds Slippy was able to discover was this billboard that could be found out of bounds, meaning this can't be normally seen without hacking the game. And on this banner is a photo of f***ing awesome entertainment, a popular skateboarding company from LA with a huge following online. Well, actually, that isn't quite the end just yet, Odd, because as I mentioned earlier, I have kept one bizarre out of bounds secret as a surprise for yourself. Now, why this is here and only viewable on the opposite side of the window, I have no idea, but it definitely reminds me of a certain someone's logo. Is it a coincidence, or was it put here on purpose, knowing that you'd be looking out of bounds for secrets after all your work on the Tony Hawk's games? I'll let the viewers be the judge of that. Maybe we'll never know. But whatever the reason, it is damn cool that it's here anyway. However, that is it for this one, guys. I'll post more behind-the-scenes secrets from this game on my social media accounts, so if you want to come and see more, come and join me on them. Huge, huge thank you to Odd Header for his input into the episode. It's been fantastic working alongside him. Again, you can find his links in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this one. As always, I'll catch you soon, but until next time, take care, everyone. <laughs>